Everybody, hope you guys are healthy and safe. I have here the Xiaomi 14 Pro, and you're watching footage shot with the DJI Pocket 3. I picked up both of these today in Hong Kong. I'm at the Hong Kong airport right now. I flew in from Thailand to Hong Kong this morning just to pick up the Xiaomi 14 Pro and the DJI Pocket 3, and then now I'm flying back to Thailand. So I flew to town just for six hours to pick up these two things. But I think it's worth it because the DJI Pocket 3 is awesome. One inch sensor, 20 millimeter wide angle lens. But the star of the show, and for today's video at least, is the Xiaomi 14 Pro because this has a brand new Qualcomm chip, the Snapdragon HN3, and a brand new software that Xiaomi calls Hyper OS. So this is a replacement for MIUI. And it has a new main camera too, so I'm eager to test this out. Okay, so the first test I'm gonna do is Geekbench 6 because this phone runs on a brand new Qualcomm Snapdragon HN3 and on the 13 Ultra with Snapdragon HN1. Okay, I have the results here. So this is the Snapdragon HN3. This is the Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 2. So you can see the multi-core score, there's quite a bit of difference for the Xiaomi 14 Pro, the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3. Okay, I will run a couple more benchmarks later, including the 20 minute wildlife extreme stress test on 3D Mark. That's the tough test. But let's take a look at the overall hardware. The first is this screen, a 6.7 inch OLED panel with a maximum nits of 3000. So it is among one of the brightest maximum nits out on the market. But we have to remember that the human eyes do not perceive nits linearly. So that means as the numbers get higher and higher, they don't necessarily reflect in real life usage. Because for example, this screen's maximum nits is higher than the iPhone 15 Pro Max, but I wouldn't say I see significant difference in brightness between these two screens. In fact, the iPhone 15 Pro Max seems slightly brighter to me. But nonetheless, this is absolutely one of the brightest panels on the market and you will have no trouble using this outside. But what makes the screen interesting is the fact that it is reinforced not by Gorilla Glass, but by this panel called Xiaomi Longjing Glass. So I believe this is technology developed in-house by Xiaomi, similar to what Huawei did with um, its Mate series with the Kunlun glass. So this is interesting because this means Xiaomi is developing its own reinforced display technology instead of licensing from Gorilla Glass. The other departure is that you'll notice the side frame of the 14 Pro is relatively thick, almost as if it's going for that iPhone, you know, flat sides look, but the screen still curves on all four sides. So I really like that. You still have that curvy display feel that you get from flagship Android phones, but the frames are also noticeably thicker and more prominent, giving you something to grip onto. And I really like the quad curved screens because when you swipe up from the bottom of the screen to go home or when you swipe from the sides to go back, your fingers running across completely smooth edges. So when it comes to the front and the side of the phone, absolutely no complaints. I do think the backside, at least in this black color, is a little bit boring. I wish I had gotten another color. I didn't have another choice in colors because I picked this up from Trinity Electronics. They imported it from China and the phone is in very, very short supply right now. So I didn't have any other options. The other departure is that the Xiaomi 14 Pro's main camera no longer uses that one inch Sony IMX 99 sensor. That sensor debuted on the Xiaomi 12S Ultra and has been used in the last three Xiaomi flagships. So this is the first Xiaomi flagship in a year and a half to move away from that one inch sensor. And the sensor size here is a downgrade. It's a one over 1.3 inch, which is over 40% smaller. So on paper, that sounds like a major, major downgrade, but Xiaomi is advertising that this is every bit as good as the IMX 989. And from my testing so far, I am seeing actually that to be true. So this sensor, it's quite interesting. Xiaomi didn't even really release that much um, English material on it. I had to dig through Chinese text, which I don't read too well because it's simplified Chinese. And I also messaged Ice Universe who gave me more information. So the main camera here, it's a sensor called Light Hunter 900. Now, this is not the official English name. This is translated from the Chinese text. So I'm hoping when Xiaomi releases this phone internationally, they change the name to something a little bit less corny than Light Hunter 900. That sounds like a straight to DVD movie starring like Nicolas Cage or something. So anyway, this Light Hunter 900 is apparently a Sony sensor custom built by Sony for the Xiaomi 14 Pro. So Xiaomi and Sony have apparently worked together again to build this lens because that's what they did with the IMX 99. So this Light Hunter 900, even though it has a small image sensor size, 
It has a really fast aperture of f1.4. That is among the fastest I've seen in a smartphone yet. For camera hardware, the two factors that determine the level of bokeh you get is the image sensor size and the aperture. So I think because the aperture is so much faster here, f1.4, to the f1.9 sensor here, I think that is why that a lot of shots that I'm getting so far look almost identical in terms of light intake ability and also bokeh, which is really impressive because you have to remember this one inch sensor when it first debuted a year and a half ago, the bokeh in this thing completely kicked the ass of every other camera on smartphones at the time. Now comes this Light Hunter 900 with a much smaller image sensor size that can still get me really, really natural, almost DSLR like creamy bokeh. If you look at these two images side by side, the depth of field, the bokeh, the background compression look almost identical, even though the image sensor size is so different. The Light Hunter 900 definitely keeps up with the IMX 989 in terms of producing strong bokeh and photos that look a little bit more organic with more depth compared to a lot of the smaller sensor phones. One very interesting I've noticed is that when shooting in really low light conditions, the Xiaomi 14 Pro just does not turn on night mode. In fact, I don't even know if night mode is in this phone because I don't see a settings for it and it does not turn on even when I'm shooting in really dark conditions. I think maybe because Xiaomi is so confident in the light intake ability of the Light Hunter 900 that it decided it no longer needs night mode. Another awesome hardware addition I haven't even talked about yet is the variable aperture. So, you know, that means when I shoot, I can shoot at 1.4, which gives me really shallow depth of field and takes in a lot of light, but I can also close that shutter up to f4. At f4, the camera will take in a little bit less light and also have a significantly wider focus pane. So that means the background blur is not as strong. Now the Xiaomi 13 Ultra also had a variable aperture, but the Xiaomi 13 Ultra's variable aperture is only two stops, f1.9 and f4. And also the range wasn't that wide. The Xiaomi 14 Pro has a wider range because f1.4 to f4, and you can stop in between. Now to be honest, because the lens and the image sensor is so small, I'm not sure there's really much use to having so many f-stops. Like if you're shooting between f2.0 and f2.2, I don't think you see a difference. You're only really gonna see a difference when the f-stops are wider. Like if you shoot at f2 or f4, then you can see the background come into focus or go out of focus as you step up or down in the f-stops. The other two cameras cover the 14 millimeter ultra wide and 75 millimeter telephoto focal length as expected, and they both look pretty good to me so far. The aperture of both the ultra wide and the telephoto lens are smaller than the aperture in the 13 Ultra. So in low light conditions, I am seeing slightly superior photos from the 13 Ultra over the 14 Pro, but it's very, very small. However, the Xiaomi 13 Ultra has a second zoom lens, a 5X periscope zoom that can cover 120 millimeter. So with this phone, you can't zoom that far. So if you wanna shoot 5X zoom, you have to do digital zoom. While the image quality is still pretty good, it does fall short of what the 13 Ultra can do. And the Xiaomi 14 Pro selfie camera, 32 megapixel is much better than the uh, selfie camera in the 13 Ultra. From photos, you can see that my skin tone is a lot more natural. You can see more details. And then finally, you can shoot 4K front-facing video. Now, I don't really, I've never cared about that, but a lot of you guys did. So finally, Xiaomi fixed one of the biggest bathroom flaws of um, the last few Xiaomi flagships. Next up, let's look at this brand new Xiaomi Hyper OS. Now, if you're expecting a software that is completely different from anything you've seen in Android, you're gonna be disappointed. For the most part, it still behaves the same way. You still swipe up for an app tray. You still swipe down for your shortcut toggles and notification panels on the other side. This is not new to HyperOS. MIUI also behaves the same way. The animations are indeed super fluid, super buttery smooth. Like if I quickly open apps and close them, you can see the app jump in and out in a very smooth and fluid motion. But again, this is not new to HyperOS. I thought MIUI's animations were also super fluid. Some of the MIUI touches, like when you exit out of an app, you can see the app icon actually move a little bit. It's still here. Like if I exit out of the photo gallery, you can see that the sun actually moves across the landscape. 
the settings page has been cleaned up a little bit. You'll see that compared to MIUI on the last device, you don't have to swipe down as far to get to the bottom. Like there's just fewer things that requires you to scroll. That means they've compartmentalized some of the settings a little bit. I still find it a little bit confusing. Like I was trying to find always on display again, and you would think it's jumping with display and brightness. But nope, it's not here because always on display is actually buried under wallpaper and customization. So that's a little bit confusing to me. Speaking of the wallpaper, is one of the new features of HyperOS is this customizable interactive wallpaper that I have to say is almost like a clone of what Apple is doing. You know, like a lot of times on Twitter, I will see people poke fun at Xiaomi for copying iPhone. And sometimes I will push back because I think sometimes people are being unfair. But this, there's no denying it. This is very similar to what Apple is doing. So you can customize wallpaper by picking you know from a selection or any images that you shot yourself from here if the photo has a subject in the foreground you can add depth to it which basically just puts that subject in front of the rigids of the wallpaper you can customize the wallpaper's font and colors which is exactly how the iPhone wallpaper system looks. So this is not original at all. So if you want to make fun of Xiaomi for copying the iPhone right here, I won't argue against that. But I do think some of you guys just find any little thing to complain about. Like for example, there's a new charging animation of HyperOS that sees a graphic pop up from the top of the screen. I know some of you guys are gonna say that's copying Dynamic Island, but I don't think that's true because it is not coming from the whole punch cutout. It is not trying to play into that cutout. So I just think it's a different animation. It's not a copy. Not everything is a copy. And if you say that, then keep that same energy too. Like the iPhone is using a periscope zoom lens that was first used in Chinese Android phones. The iPhone introduced night mode several years after Huawei did it. Did the iPhone copy there or not? Keep that same energy. So I think if you're expecting HyperOS to be this completely brand new smartphone experience, you're going to be disappointed. But to be fair, HyperOS was not designed just for a smartphone. What makes HyperOS special, according to Xiaomi, is that this is a software that's built for Xiaomi's entire portfolio of products, including the Internet of Things products. So Xiaomi makes a lot of stuff, man. Rice cookers, vacuum cleaners, air purifier, like robot dogs. So HyperOS will apparently play nice with all that. And then also, I believe Xiaomi is going to jump into electric vehicles and smart cars soon if they haven't already. I mean, they might already. I don't keep in touch with the Chinese electric vehicle scene. I mean, I don't even do that in America, I, so I don't know. But whatever the case, eventually HyperOS will run in Xiaomi smartphones and also smart cars, electric vehicles in China that is running Xiaomi's operating system. So. It's a software that's designed to be fluid. So before I wrap up this video, let's bring it back to the Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Gen 3. This is definitely going to be the best chip in the Android space. And I did run that 20 minute wildlife extreme stress test and this phone passed with flying colors. You can see that the scores are quite high, but more impressively, this phone's performance stayed consistent from the first loop all the way to the 20th loop. Obviously, there's still a little bit of a drop off but this drop off is much smaller than in years past. The phone did get quite hot though, particularly the aluminum frame, but it finished the test. Because you remember the Xiaomi 12 Pro that I reviewed two years ago, it could not finish that same 20 minutes test. That's about it for this video. I hope you enjoyed this content. If you did, please subscribe to my channel. I always get my hands on the latest mobile devices. So if a company sends it for me to test, Great. If they don't send it for me to test, I will buy my own. I don't need to wait for a company to give me access before I make the video. And I don't need to kiss company butt to get access because I will buy my own devices if need. So if you want to support me, please subscribe to my channel. That's it for now. Thanks for watching.